Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by John Maysfield. He was an English poet who lived from 1878 to 1967 and was the poet laureate of the United Kingdom from 1930 until 1967. Among his most well-known works are children's novels The Midnight Folk and The Box of Delights, and he is known for the poem Sea Fever, which is the poem that I'm going to read today. I was reminded of this poem by someone on Twitter recently, and I wish I could find out or remember who it was um, to, to give them credit. So um, if you're listening to this in some random reason, then uh, thank you for reminding me of this. Um, this is a poem that was, uh, you might remember it as being quoted in the 1971 movie Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, or perhaps in a Star Trek episode by Captain James T. Kirk. It showed up in many musical arrangements on several albums. It's been put to music in many different ways. So it's quite a popular and famous uh, poem. This is how it goes. I must go down to the seas again, to the lonely sea and the sky, and all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. And the wheels kick and the wind's song and the white sails shaking, and a gray mist on the sea's face and a gray dawn breaking. I must go down to the seas again, for the call of the running tide is a wild call and a clear call that may not be denied. And all I ask is a windy day with the white clouds flying and the flung spray and the blown spume and the seagulls crying. I must go down to the seas again, to the vagrant gypsy life, to the gull's way and the whale's way where the wind's like a wetted knife. And all I ask is a merry yarn from a laughing fellow rover, and quiet sleep and a sweet dream when the long trick's over. I have heard it said on a couple of occasions that this is a great poem uh, for memorization, say with middle school students or something, but really for anybody. I've, I've um, heard it on occasion said that a lot of people um, memorized it as the first first poem they memorized aside from nursery rhymes and, and songs and things like that as little children. This is a poem that first appeared in a 1902 collection called Saltwater Ballads. This is Maysfield's first volume of poetry. And you can get a sense just in the, the cadences of the poem, the language of the poem, that it would be one of those those poems that orators would really enjoy, actors would really enjoy. You can go on YouTube and find actors, uh, you know, and orators and uh, performers reading this poem. I was reading about the poem and learned that Maysfield's parents died when he was a child. And when he was 13, he had an aunt who was tired of his, quote, addiction to reading. So she sent him off to train for a life as a sailor. And he did that for a while. And that was the, you know, that, that work, that, those experiences fed a lot of his work, and, uh, including this poem, obviously. But he eventually gave up on that life, after, apparently after not too long. And he actually jumped ship in New York, where he worked to various jobs and um, wrote and read during his free time. He eventually did go back to England, uh, you know, as indicated by the fact that he became the poet laureate of England, lived there for a very long time and, and uh, wrote till he was well into his 80s. But I'm fascinated by the idea that he hated this life and still wrote this poem because this is one of those poems that on the, you know, it's got that ballad sense to it uh, that seems to be celebrating this way of life, the adventure of it, it seems to be. It reminds me of the charge of the Light Brigade, for example. And yet he didn't like this life. And in many ways, it feels like a poem of longing, of longing for that life to be different. He says, all I ask is... He says, all I ask, and then he lists a whole bunch of things, as if it's such a simple thing to just ask for this, these simple things. It's a kind of a fascinating approach. So I read it as a, not really a call to adventure poem, but as a melancholy poem, as a kind of a wistful poem. I'd love to hear how you read it. Um, I'd love to hear especially how 
you know, your children read it. So those of you who are younger listeners, it's not a memory contest, but if you'd like to go ahead and, and read this poem, you know, record a performance of yourself reading this poem, post it on social media, tag us at Close Reads Pods on Instagram or post it on the Close Reads Facebook group. And I'd love to hear the different ways that different people read this. Like I said, I read it a little wistfully, a little longingly with a little bit of melancholy, whereas some people might read it as a little bit more rousing or a little bit more of a call to arms. So I'd love to hear that. So go ahead and do that. And again, tag us and, and we'll uh, I'd love to hear some of those readings, especially by younger people. But uh, here, one more time, is Sea Fever by John Maysfield. I must go down to the seas again, to the lonely sea in the sky. And all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. And the wheels kick, and the wind's song and the white sails shaking, and a gray mist on the sea's face, and a gray dawn breaking. I must go down to the seas again, for the call of the running tide is a wild call, and a clear call that may not be denied. And all I ask is a windy day with the white clouds flying, and the flung spray and the blown spume and the seagulls crying. I must go down to the seas again, to the vagrant gypsy life, to the gull's way and the whale's way where the wind's like a wetted knife. And all I ask is a merry yarn from a laughing fellow rover and quiet sleep and a sweet dream when the long trick's over. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. We'll be back tomorrow with another poem for you.